Hi, thank you for watching Dig Into China. I'm Dong Xiong. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. In recent days, a significant issue has gained attention on the Chinese internet. The leaked minutes from the Kunming Urban Investment and Construction Expert Conference have sparked extensive discussions among China's financial and economic circles and social media platforms. These minutes have caused shock among different groups as they uncover discussions among experts from banks and investment institutions concerning the status of local government debts and the financial situation of the government in Kunming. The revealed information is alarming and sheds light on the embarrassing problems of local government debt in China. In late May, the Kunming Municipal Government's State-Owned Assets Supervision and Administration Commission released a statement. We have recently observed the dissemination of false information titled Key Points of Kunming Bank Expert Roadshow and Minutes of Kunming Urban Investment Expert Conference in certain WeChat groups and online media platforms. This misinformation has negatively affected Kunming's state-owned enterprises and related stakeholders. Consequently, we have taken legal actions to safeguard our lawful rights and interests. Currently, the Kunming State-Owned Assets Supervision and Administration Commission is actively advancing the reform of state-owned enterprises, enhancing the efficiency of state-owned asset supervision, fostering stronger collaboration among banks, government entities and enterprises, and actively contributing to the overall development of the city. We wholeheartedly seek deeper cooperation with various sectors of society in various fields. We kindly urge everyone to critically evaluate online information, refrain from believing and spreading rumors. Regarding the previously circulated conference minutes on the internet, here are my takeaways. Firstly, the official clarification from Kunming is an unusual form of confirmation. It does not explicitly deny the existence or authenticity of the circulated minutes, but rather asserts that it is a debunking. This raises questions about its true meaning. The statement does not refute any specific content within the minutes as false, nor does it provide a direct rebuttal. However, by emphasizing the debunking aspect, it inadvertently implies the authenticity of the minutes. Furthermore, the official response from Kunming sidesteps addressing the intended points of dissemination. Instead, it focuses on the generic appeal of not believing or spreading rumors, which lacks substantial content. The main points addressed in this circulated document on the internet are as follows. 1. There is a notable concern regarding the risk of local government debt default due to insufficient funds and a considerable repayment pressure. 2. The money used to repay debts in the past was provided by Shanghai Urban Development Fund. However, due to the impact of the pandemic last year, Shanghai did not provide the money, and the central government did not give any explanation. Consequently, the current approach towards the Shanghai Urban Development Fund is to borrow money instead of requesting it. 3. Local urban investment companies have been facing a significant issue of salary payment delays for a period ranging from 3 to 4 months. The Kunming Municipal State-Owned Assets Supervision and Administration Commission did not deny any of these key points. Why is the main reason this circulated document has had such a significant impact on Chinese society? One crucial aspect is that one of the points raised that directly affects the interests of every ordinary person. This has generated widespread attention not only within the financial industry but also among ordinary internet users who have actively joined the discussion. Within the document, someone raised a question. The question is, does the provincial government still have funds? Will they ultimately rely on enterprises? 
The response indicates that there are still some funds available. To illustrate, examples were given, such as Social Security funds, Medicare funds, and Housing Provident funds. This revelation had a profound impact. What message does it convey to society? Currently, local finances are depleted, and in order to sustain government operations and bridge the gap in local debt, the only remaining option is to deduct from Social Security Fund, Medicare funds, and Housing Provident funds. This directly affects the immediate interests of every citizen. Hence, this circulated document has caused a significant shock in Chinese society. In the past, people used to discuss and even mock the misfortune of local government debt. However, little did they know that the local governments had long been planning, essentially saying, if I'm in trouble, I won't let you fare any better. As a result, this incident has sparked extensive discussions in Chinese society because people have suddenly realized that local debt is directly related to their personal interests. What was once a subject of mockery, bystander observation, and ridicule as local debt continues to mount has now reached a point where it affects basic social welfare. Why did the refutation statement from the Kunming municipal government not address specific details of the circulated document? The reason is that many of the details mentioned in the document can be verified through official information sources. For instance, the document claims a significant decline in fiscal revenue from land sales in Kunming, dropping from the level of hundreds of billions to tens of billions. Is this an exaggeration? No, it is not. On the official website of the Kunming Municipal Finance Bureau, one can still find information supporting this claim. In 2019, the revenue from land sales in Kunming was 95.6 billion yuan. However, in 2022, the revenue plummeted to only 14.6 billion yuan. This substantial drop from the level of hundreds of billion to tens of billion is not an exaggeration. Hence, the official refutation from Yunnan province refrained from pinpointing which specific statement in the document was incorrect. Instead, they opted for a general statement advising people not to believe or spread rumors. Even the official media had previously reported that the Kunming's overall debt ratio had significantly risen to 81.5%. It is projected that the Kunming's general public budget revenue for this year will reach 54.6 billion yuan, showing a 7% increase compared to the previous year. However, this growth is insufficient to offset the substantial decrease in land revenue, resulting in a growing budget deficit. In the fourth point, it is important to understand how local government debts are formed and why they continue to increase. By grasping two key concepts, one can gain a better understanding of China's local government debt. Since 2017, the local government debt balance in China has been increasing at an annual rate of 16.3%. In contrast, the nominal GDP growth rate during the same period was only 7.8%. The growth rate of debt surpasses that of the economy, more than doubling it. As a result, this debt can only continue to escalate, reflecting a concept where the debt keeps accumulating and expanding. The second concept pertains to the formation mechanism of local government debts. How are these debts formed? Typically, local governments borrow funds to invest in infrastructure projects such as road and bridge construction. Subsequently, they raise land prices and engage in real estate development. This process involves improving infrastructure, increasing land values, selling the land, and using the proceeds to repay the debt. Once the debts are repaid, local governments continue borrowing for further infrastructure projects, resulting in a continuous growth of debt. The underlying reason is that the borrowed funds for infrastructure projects which primarily serve public welfare rather than profit cannot be fully recovered. Although these projects do not generate returns, interest payments need to be made. 
How are these interest payments covered? By borrowing new funds to repay the old debts and using increased revenue from land sales to repay the previously borrowed money. This mechanism can be sustained as long as land prices continue to rise and the land sales generate substantial income. However, if land sales decreases, this debt mechanism will break, leading to a persistent growth in debt that eventually faces the risk of collapse. Understanding these two concepts help in comprehending why local government debt continues to escalate and eventually face the possibility of a collapse. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.